All righty then, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. It is time for some more Alpha Star One versus One replay cast action. We have good old Alpha Star today, gonna be playing Protoss, one of the three StarCraft II races that there is. If there's a fourth, that would just throw a wrench into everything. And I don't even wanna think about it. It may be noon, but it is still, or it may be one o'clock, but it is still too early to think about adding a fourth race in StarCraft 2. But here we are in the top left. It is a diamond hero. I know, I know, guys, you're, you're getting a little bit fed up of all the diamond games, but on this channel, I said I would cast every single Alpha Star game, and that's what we're in for. So we're going to slog through it a little bit. And uh, there'll be some some fun moments, some sad moments. It, it's it's a roller coaster watching Alpha Star. Either way, it's just uh, fun to sit down and watch some StarCraft. No matter what kind of StarCraft I'm watching, I will be happy. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't really think of anything that, I'm, that I'd be too unhappy about to watch. All right, here we have an early pool from the Diamond player, so that is exciting. A bit of a cheeky cheese. We'll see how Alpha Star is going to deal with this, and we'll see how well the Diamond player is going to execute this. And whether the Diamond player will end up executing Alpha Star or not, who knows? So Alpha Star just going for a... Just going for a Nexus, because it's Alpha Star. It don't give a darn whether you go for an early pool or not. I myself have an incredibly hard time when I play Protoss holding off early Zerg rushes. So if you ever meet me on the ladder, just go for an early pool if you're a Zerg, and I'll just I'll just crumble whenever I'm playing Protoss. A Zealot is on the way for Alpha Star. Cybercore added in part of that wall. We'll see if that, if that wall is going to get completed or not. Either way, Lings are out for the diamond player, but it's not like it's a ton of lings or anything like that. There's a hatchery behind this. Quite a delay though on the diamond player's base. Just getting into a queen and ling speed makes me a little bit curious, as this is no small commitment. I didn't get the exact timing of the pool for the diamond player, but it's the kind in which you want to get something done. And Alpha Star just didn't care. Alpha Star's like, whatever, I'll just build my nexus anyway because, because I'm an awesome robot. This overlord looking spiny as always. The Stegosaurus. Stegoverlord? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe I'll come up with something better, but it does have like Stegosaurus like spikes on it. Uh, whoever designed that skin, definitely a fan of dinosaurs. In fact, whoever designed the Zerg skin in general, probably a fan of dinosaurs, particularly after the Heart of the Swarm campaign, which you kind of just go off into space and go to dinosaur world in a sense. Anyway, we take a look here right now. A lair is on the way for our Diamond Zerg friend. Uh, two base lair, third base is just on the way now, so that's a little bit odd. We've got the Adepts and the Zealot going to be moving out on the map. A couple more Lings are on the way for the Diamond player, so we'll see if that's going to be enough to shut these down with ease. The Queen's setting to work already on these Adepts. There's only two drones at the natural, but now there's going to be none. Some more Lings pop out, going to set to work on these Adepts. Looks like they will all get cleaned up. Might be a little bit early to call that. The Zealot's gone, though. One of the Adepts is gone. Oh, spoke too soon. Now the Zealot's gone. And both the Adepts are dead. So two drones for that. Probably not worth it for Alpha Star. But if we take a look at the worker count that our Zerg friend is on right now, uh, it's looking good for Alpha Star. So it's just going to be a three base Nidus. But this is off the back of 18 drones. I think this isn't even enough drones here for our Diamond Zerg. Like, you gotta be doing this off like 24 drones or something. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned. Go big or go home though, I always say. And ladies and gentlemen, seeing as how this Diamond Zerg only has 18 drones, let's try and hit 18 likes on this video. Slap that like button, abuse it or whatever. I'm gonna be working on getting a, uh, a just a slap it emote done for the channel for the live streams at some point. So that'll uh, be coming, but we see Alpha Star going to be harassing a little bit with these Adepts, but oh, this is going to be a bit of uh, trading blows here, and I think this might actually favor the Zerg a bit. Just a ton of Lings in a Nidus. Uh, this could really catch Alpha Star off guard. Alpha Star is warping in Adepts, but Adepts aren't really what you want when uh, when you're kind of in a base race, because they suck at killing buildings. All right, there's the Nidus. Lings flooding into the main base of Alpha Star. We'll see if this is enough to catch the AI off, AI off guard. This is a lot of Lings, no doubt. 
38 lings. Looks like there's a big old Adept Recall, which is an interesting choice from Alpha Star. However, all Alpha Star needs to do is hold this off, and uh, with taking on just a portion of these lings, that is a great start. More Zealots have been warped in. I was kind of hoping for the Zerg that maybe this would work, but... Uh, it simply didn't. No queens even joined up, seeing as how there's only one queen, and you kind of need queens to make a Ling Rush like this work. And Alpha Star just slaps down another diamond player. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is Laughing Games continuing on with some more StarCraft Alpha Star. We've had one intro, yes, but what about a second intro? Anyway, we have got Alpha Star this game, going to be taking on a Masters player. Uh, yeah, I mean, a Masters Zerg against Alpha Star's Terran could be good. It's going to be good, I hope, anyway. Uh, we've got a lot of TVZs to come up in the future at some point. Longer TVZs, too, as uh, that's, there's just a random amount of TVZs that are all around the same length, so they've kind of just been sitting there waiting for me to cast them. And I'll probably cast uh, cast a few of those coming up soon, so keep an eye out for that. A longer Alpha Star TVZ. This one, I don't know how long it's going to be. We have a look here. Just a drone getting established as a hatchery, kind of just exploding into a building. That must be a weird sensation for the Zerg. And then just drones on the way, so a pretty economical opening for the Zerg. Doing the... Doing the more really economical thing in the sense of going for multiple drones before starting the pool on the hatchery. Zergs are pretty free to do this these days though, so gas, then pool. Already got the couple of drones out. Very economical play from the Zerg. In the past, Zerg really had to consider this kind of thing when you were going up against, say, like constant Protoss proxies or things, but there's not too many early Protoss proxies or even cannon rushes at the highest level. Proxy 2 racks from Terran are still common though, so that's something that Zerg has to keep in mind. So if this was a Proxy 2 racks and it was unscouted, this would be the worst build for the Masters player to try and hold that. Ultimately though, that's not, that's not what's happening. We take a look, a Reaper on the way for Alpha Star. Just gonna be going for a Reaper expand, good old, good old usual stuff there. Spawning pool on the way here for the Masters player. Then just probably going to be a couple of queens getting fired up, some lings, and all that money is gone. Looks like a drone going to be moving down towards this base. We'll see what the timing is going to be for the third base for the Masters player. I mean, some Zergs get very, very early third bases, and it looks like this guy is going to be one of them. Super duper early. The Reaper moving across the map for Alpha Star is going to show up at the natural. Uh, start Micron against these lings, set to work on one of the drones. Uh, the drone stays alive for now. These lings going to try and push back that Reaper. Looks like they are going to be giving their lives to scare this away. The Queen's though out now. Two dead lings. Pretty, pretty standard as a matter of fact. Two dead lings versus the Reaper is pretty darn normal. Queen's now are going to shoo that Reaper away. And then the game's just going to continue on from here. Alpha Star made the one safety Marine. He is now going to be swapping over the factory. Start making those Hellions, get a Starport on the way. Last game, or last uh, match that I cast, Alpha Star actually went for BCs, which is exciting. I wonder if we'll see that again, ever again, as a matter of fact. I am not sure. Now we take a look. Metabolic Boost is on the way here for the Masters player. Just a little bit of gas being mined, so nothing too aggressive is going to be coming. Probably just the reactive Zerg style, or at least that's what this usually sets up into. However, Zergs can turn on a dime and quickly just be super lethal. We already see this Zerg thrown back into the gas, potentially for a quicker lair, potentially for... Gee, I don't know. It could be anything. Banshee is on the way for Alpha Star. Cloak is on the way, too. All the while, Hellions are coming out for Alpha Star. And then we'll see how well this Zerg's going to be able to deal with the Hellions and Banshees out on the map. Couple of lings being made already, just uh, the standard get out of my face Hellions amount of lings. These lings are basically there to ensure that the Hellions will die and be cleaned up easier in case in case the Terran just YOLOs in with their Hellions. But, oh, the Zerg having some of these drones out of position, losing three already is not a good start. But then Alpha Star going to be getting pounced on Queens and Lings in position. Grenade gets tossed down. I'm not sure if that helped or hindered Alpha Star. And in the, in the end, that turns into a much, much better trade there. 
for the Masters player, shutting down shutting down those Hellions. All in all, that was three drones for four Hellions and a Reaper. As a Zerg, you want to take that trade any day of the week. Alpha Star, if it had just got the drones and then, then escaped with those Hellions, that would have been considered great for the Terran. Instead, that went very sour. Very, very sour indeed. We also see the Masters player came in with an Overlord, spotted the Cloak, so Spores should be on the way, and they are indeed one Spore anyway. Two Spores. We got one Spore, two Spore, where's the third Spore? Already there. And so that should be more than enough to defend versus a Cloak Banshee. I don't want to jinx our Zerg friend though as I say that because we all know how good Alpha Star is with Banshees, how relentless Alpha Star is with Banshees. That's the main way to sum it up. Once the AI has a has a banshee it will just not stop harassing it'll keep making banshees until the sky turns green and then we take a look here queen's gonna be trying to take care of these hellions links come in to help out as well a couple more drones going down but all in all for a couple more hellions i'm not sure how good or bad of a trade that was looks like three more drones for four more hellions so once again a bad trade for alpha star and the zerg feeling confident fires up another 11 drones queens are here they will have to avoid these banshees. Got to get uh, to hugging that spore crawler. No overseer just yet because the lair's not done. So the Zerg is at the mercy of these banshees unless near a spore crawler. So some queens could be going down, some drones at the very least. The queens are kind of just angrily being there in the way of the banshees. One more gets picked off. That was actually the second queen to go down. So not bad for Alpha Star. Not great, not terrible for the Masters player. And the game is just going to continue on from here. We have a Hydra Den from Alpha, from the Zerg player, pardon me. So I'm really enjoying this TVC. We'll see how well Hydras are going to do against Alpha Star in this situation. I am getting a little bit concerned here, though, for the Zerg. As we take a look, the Terran Macro is just starting to take off. This Zerg player has done a pretty darn good job of managing their economy, though. So they're keeping pace with Alpha Star, which is not something every player can do. So that is great to see. And yeah, I mean, the third base for Alpha Star is being saturated, pretty reasonably timed. The Banshees are out on the map. They could still always get something done. And we are going to be seeing Hydraling Bane from our Master's friend, who's also going up to a very healthy drone count, which is great to see. Healthy drones on four bases. Combat Shield is on the way for Alpha Star. That Marine production is probably going to be kicking in. I imagine lots of Marines. We don't actually see Alpha Star make Marauders all that often. Like, if ever, as a matter of fact. So that's something I never really thought about. Banshee's coming on in. Going to kill off a few drones. Three, four Banshees is a very lethal threat. Over these Hydras should be able to help out defend versus these. If there was an Overseer, but there's not. So these are just some dead Hydras, some dead Queens. There's the Overseer. And the Hydras and Queens put out a decent amount of damage. So two of the Banshees go down. Alpha Star losing those, and then the game is going to continue on here. We have got Muscular Augments on the way for the Masters player, so those Hydras will be as effective as possible. Increased move speed, they are just comically slow without that speed. You may remember from the past, past Zerg we watched play against Alpha Star. And then we have got Pneumatized Carapace on the way here for the Masters player too. So I'm really liking this Zerg play. We've honestly cast a few games which didn't look too hot against Alpha Star, but I feel like this Zerg is doing a pretty darn good job. The concern I do have though is the Siege Tank count. Alpha Star does build into a monstrous amount of Siege Tanks, which is actually quite good against a Ling Bane Hydra composition until there's Vipers. And Vipers, uh, they could be a ways away. So we'll see how that's going to play out. For the Zerg, though, I do like the fact that 2-2 is ahead of Alpha Star. Alpha Star has yet to even start its own 2-2. All the while, the Banshee is going to be moving in, looking for something else. But uh, the spore cr another Spore Crawler has been built. Alpha Star is dropping, going to be cleaning out Creep in the center here. Hydra's Lings and Banes, though, should be enough to shoo this away. The big attack, though. Oh, lots more Marines coming down. I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure if our Zerg friend is going to be able to take on Alpha Star's mass Marine army until that Baneling speed is done. Once that Baneling speed is done, I have a lot more hope for our Zerg. But until then, you do not want to be running into this many Marines. The Bane should have speed soon, though. Where's that Bane speed? 
Uh, I think it's done now. The 2-2 isn't quite yet done for this attack, but the Banes will roll in. They are going to get good connections on the Marines. All the while, the Queens in the main shut down those Banshees. This is looking like some pretty good play from our Master Zerg. Hydra's even catching a full medivac. Now, despite the Master Zerg having a pretty solid game, I am a little bit concerned. Alpha Star, very, very good worker count. It is lacking a fourth base, but then the supply is still in the lead for Alpha Star. And that's just because Alpha Star is a macro machine. We're going to be seeing a fourth base get up for Alpha Star. Uh, better late than never. And the Master Zerg is just continuing to spread creep all over to tech up. Already at the 2 2 upgrades is quite nice. Alpha Star quite a ways away from 2 2. A couple of Banelings. Gotta be careful. We see plus one attack on the way here. For the Master's player, so those Hydras will get a benefit. A Ling run by goes in towards Alpha Star's base. We don't often see Ling run by do too much to Alpha Star just because its macro is really tough to hinder since it's literally a robot. Ling's gonna kill off a decent number of SCVs though, so that's at least something, but I don't doubt that Alpha Star will not replace these workers. Star will absolutely replace these workers, I imagine. Or maybe not, as it is actually maxed out. Or just about maxed out. So it kind of now has a bigger army supply. Or a bigger army potential. Due to losing those workers, which could be a plus, could be a minus. We'll see. The Zerg going to be trying to get up a fifth base. However, we see Alpha Star is looking to move on in. And this is a huge number of siege tanks. They have plus one attack. More and more lings are on the way for the Masters player. But the Masters player is definitely lagging on supply. The tanks are set up in quite a nasty position. The Zerg can't attack into this location. He's going to try. But oh, this could be a disaster. The Hydra's in the choke point. Oh, God. What a... <laughs> oh, this was terrible. I can't even commentate it. Uh, you gotta have a counter when a Terran has this many siege tanks. These tanks just pivoting on a dime, just turning around, just shelling anything that comes into range, and this Zerg's army just melted. GG, Alpha Star just builds enough of a tanks, builds enough tanks. The Zerg didn't have Vipers, the Zerg didn't get a surround, all of which are a requirement to deal with that many siege tanks. So, well played by Alpha Star. I'd like to see a rematch between this Zerg and Alpha Star, though as uh, it seemed like quite a quite an even match in this case. But yeah, thanks so much to everyone for watching. Press that like button, slap it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year. That is our long-term goal. Join the Discord if you haven't already, particularly if you're a, if you're a member on the channel, as uh, I recently added member roles on the Discord, just for something to say thank you. And then, of course, follow me on Twitter, I'll see you next time. This has been Laughing Games. Thanks for watching.